What is up, my friends? Welcome back to another video. And today we are going to be covering all five sections of the Metropolis Arc series with the release of Metropolis Arc 5 very, very recently, I wanted to kind of go over the different uh, volumes, kind of share what each one is about, and I'll go through some of my favorite patches from each one. I do own all five. Big thanks to OT for sending me uh, four and five. I purchased one, two, and three myself uh, before I became a reviewer <laughs> and uh, doing the YouTube stuff. But um, yeah, I thought it would be a, a great uh, a chance to kind of look at the different libraries, see what they offer, and kind of how they differentiate from one another as well. And then we can kind of talk about our recommendations and maybe if you think it's, you know, appropriate for your toolkit, whether you would use it or not, you can let me know as well. Before we really do that, though, I want to give you my sample library buyer's guide in case you don't have it yet. In case you're looking for some new libraries and you're not really sure where to start, there's so many options there on the market. I want to give that to you absolutely free. It basically combines all of my personal recommendations into one digestible, easy to read guide. So if you want to check it out, it contains like strings, women's brass and percussion. There's also like piano libraries, jazz libraries, ethic libraries, all that good stuff. All, di all, all basically condensed into one PDF. So it's totally free. Just click the link below. It'll take you straight there and you can check it out as my thank you to you for checking out this video today. So without further ado, let's jump into the Metropolis Arc series. And uh, it's really cool because on the Orchestral Tools website, on the very front at the time of this recording, there is a bundle price for um, 9.99 euros plus VAT. And so that's actually a really good price um, before that, right? But um, for, for all five collections, I think when I first uh, purchased them, I got them for two or 300 euros um, for the first couple of volumes. And that already brings you up to around 900, right? So uh, they, they really want to get you over to the signed player. That's that's the whole idea. But anyway, um, they give you a nice table here comparing the different sections. So, you know, e each one focuses on something a little bit different. The first volume, Metropolis Arc 1, is focused on the most loud and powerful dynamics, whereas volume two is the opposite. It's like pianissimo, like deep, low, and quite intense. Metropolis Arc 3 is focused more on the percussive side of the orchestra, so lots of drums, lots of um, percussive instrumentation, you know, and it's that's also very loud, bold, and powerful. Metropolis Arc 4 focuses on the smaller section sizes, so with a little bit more detail and clarity. And so they, they say focus, precise, and powerful. And then finally for uh, Metropolis Arc 5, it's a little more niche, but uh, it focuses on more of the trailer uh, hybrids type of stuff with the orchestra, so special instruments and utilities. Lots of effects in there using the orchestra. So if you were to go for one that's maybe more general purpose, then I would definitely say maybe one or two. Um, the three, four, and five definitely feel a little more niche to me. But without further ado, let's kind of jump in and uh, I'll go through each of the patches that I personally prefer. You can see here I've stuck with the contact versions. I personally don't see myself moving from the contact versions anytime soon because I just love contact and I love the way these libraries work in contact. Um, it's just very easy for me to use and I have no reason to move to sign right now. So anyway, let's kind of jump into it and I'll play through these patches one by one. Here we go. So this is Metropolis Arc 1. I'm going in order here. I'll tell you when we switch to the next volume. Thank you. 
All right, so that is Metropolis Arc 1 in a nutshell. Uh, just to really quickly go over the structure with you, they're basically split into four districts or four sections, and I believe the different arcs, all of them are kind of like that. Uh, but you have the orchestra, the choir, the percussion, and the band, and they have all these different ones here. So I'm only, you know, nipping the tip of the iceberg here, but uh, some of my favorite patches have to be like the band stuff because it's so huge and I love the guitars, it's so easy to play. And then the choirs, um, just the amount of intensity and just the, you know, the power that they give you is simply fantastic. So I just really love the intensity and the boldness that this library comes with. Let's close that up. Okay, now let's move on to the Metropolis Arc 2. So uh, folder structure is very similar. We have orchestra, choir, percussion, and keys this time. Not really going to cover that here, but uh, yeah, let's let's start with the orchestra and then we'll kind of move on. So here we go. This is Metropolis Arc 2. I mean, these libraries have just a gorgeous, gorgeous sound. And the, the, just the clarity and the detail in all of the samples, man, you, you, don't, you don't hear you know, anything else like this. Beautiful.
All right, moving on to Metropolis Arc 3. Now, again, we talked about how this is the percussive orchestra. And to be honest, I don't use this and Metropolis Arc, Metropolis Arc 4 as much, but there are some patches that are just beautiful, so I want to share them with you here. Here we go. All right, and then moving on to Metropolis Arc 4. This is the final one of the contact versions I have, at least. And uh, this one features the well-known power legato that Orchestral Tools really came up with. So if we take a look at the instruments here, uh, let's take a look at orchestral sections. So for example, each of these different sections has a legato, but in addition, you have the power legato as well. So it's a more pronounced, intense legato transition. Here we go, let's have a listen. First of all, the full orchestra.
I forgot how much fun that patch was to play day. Anyway, so you can hear how intense uh, those Legato transitions are in Metropolis Arc 4 for the Power Legato. Again, I'm only scratching the tip of the iceberg here, but you get a sense of how these libraries sound and the intensity and grit behind them. So finally, let's dive into Metropolis Arc 5, which is exclusively only on the sign player. And again, I'm only just gonna play a few of the patches here. I already did a review of the library, but um, again, you have a very similar makeup. So the different orchestral sections, excluding percussion this time, but you still have the choirs, the blends as featured in um, Metropolis Arc 4, but now you also have analog sits as well. So here's what these kind of sound like. So we'll start with the high strings. All right, that is an overview of all five Metropolis Arc packages. Great, great libraries. Um, not traditional in the sense of having the individual instruments separated out for you so you can uh, orchestrate in a tr traditional way, but they do give you, you know, the ensembles and kind of predetermined um, ensemble sections so you can get playing right away and get your sketches done very, very quickly and also have that robust, huge, intense sound that the Metropolis Art series is really known for. If you were to ask me, though, uh, which ones do I really prefer? I think I still use one and two the most. Uh, for, of course, specific use cases. For uh, Metropolis Arc 3, I definitely use the, the low string staccatissimo a lot for action passages, you know? But in terms of contact versus sign, contact for me all the way so far, just because like 99% of what I do is in contact anyway. So I'm just used to that workflow. And funny enough, to me, the, the legato in, um, in the Metropolis Arc, you know, one through four sounds better 
than like to me at least than in sign so maybe it's just the programming maybe it's actually the way the legato was recorded um i i don't know but personal preference i do like the legato in um, the contact versions more so that's just a personal thing but again i hope this this video kind of gave you a sense of what those libraries sound like if you don't own any of them and you're interested in this deal then um, it might be a good one to invest in if you want to get those once and for all because i think they're going back up to what 1500 euros in a couple of weeks so definitely look into that if you want to have these collections once and for all but in any case thank you so much for watching again let me know if you have any uh questions about the libraries or if you um have any thoughts below whether you think it's a good fit for you or not are you on the fence about it do you already own them are you missing a, a collection or two let me know i'd love to kind of chat about that as well and if you get again if you don't have the sample library buyer's guide going over my personal recommendations for the libraries i like to use on a regular basis organized by the, the sections like strings, winds, brass, and percussion, plus some other categories as well, that I want you to have it totally free. I put it together. It's totally streamlined. You can read it within a single afternoon. And uh, again, just click the link below in the description box. It'll take you straight there. You can download it for free. Again, it's my gift to you for checking out this video today. So anyway, thank you so very much. I really appreciate it. And I'll catch you in the next video. Take care, my friend. Bye-bye.